What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co host, Glenn Martin. And uh, we are excited to talk to you guys about um, an intriguing topic regarding our Baltimore Ravens. And I think one that uh, brings fear and optimism, optimism to some people. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're going to be talking about Steve Bishotti's recent interview with Marlon Humphrey on Studio 44. Uh, and most specifically about his idea for the team moving forward as far as ownership goes. But mm -hmm. just on a personal note from the show standpoint, just want to say, Glenn, I'm glad to be home, back in studio, back from California. Got the mic back. I'm on I'm on the good stuff now. Mm -hmm. Also, we just went to the studio today. We set up the table, set up the chairs, set up the mic stands, set up the tripods. Um, we got a couple other things to set up. We're getting the wall set up soon. <laughs> so we're really excited about it. Can't wait for you guys to uh, enjoy that as well. Shout out to DK yep. for the help. Um, yeah. And Cam. And Cam. That's right. Cam. He's Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so, yeah, appreciate that. Cam's going to be our, our official roadie, dude. Like, that's he's going to travel around and set up the gear. Um, but, yeah, man, it was an absolute blast. So, Glenn, set the stage for us. Yeah. Um, in, for those that haven't watched this or, or haven't listened to it, let's uh, give, give us some context. Yeah, absolutely. So if you haven't seen it, uh, it can be found on the Ravens website, on the Ravens app, as well as on YouTube, on the Ravens uh, YouTube channel. Um, check out Studio 54's newest episode with Steve Bishotti. He sat down for almost an hour uh, with with Marlon, and um, he's just a great interview. You know, he's he's he was very open, and uh, yeah, it was it was just an awesome interview. But specifically, what we're talking about today in this video is uh, Marlon asked him about his future plans as the owner of of the Ravens. Is this going to be a family thing? Is this going to be, uh, you know, the Broncos were just sold for just under $5 billion. You know, how did that impact you? And, and basically, you know, I'm kind of, I'm going to be paraphrasing when I, when I speak on this, but he made it clear that this is not a family thing. This is not something that's going to be like the Rooney's in Pittsburgh or the Joneses in, 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 in uh, Dallas. They're not going to be, he's not going to be handing down the, the Baltimore Ravens to his children. Um, he felt that the burden was too great uh, to to make, you know, to kind of force that on his children, uh, whether they wanted to or not. And he felt that it kind of tears some families apart uh, when you have that that legacy where you constantly are handing down uh, the team to to the next generation. So I found that part to be interesting. He talked about um, he also, you know, he didn't make any promises and has no plans to own the Ravens until his death. Um, so, uh, he didn't exactly say when he would be selling the team, but basically said that this eventually he will sell the team. Um, he said, for instance, it could be say he's age 72 and this is no longer the fun that it currently still is. Uh, he's still having a blast being the owner. And, um, so he said that it could be when he's say 72 years old, he may decide he wants to sell the team and use that money in, um, in you know to to contribute to charities and and other philanthropic event like he he wants to pass the 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 wealth down and along before his death and not after he's in the grave he wants to see where that money's going mm -hmm. um and so he basically said i would probably spend the next 10 years from 72 to 82 god willing uh spending that money in in charitable ways and 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 that's what brings him joy now after he did so with the HBCU um 20 HBCU uh scholarships that he that he announced in Ozzie Newsom's name he said that was that was an incredible experience and one that he wants to continue uh to build on so Jimbo he will not be the owner forever he will be selling this team this will not be given down to his children so when you heard that Jimbo what First of all, were you surprised to hear that this is not going to be a family thing? Were, what, what was your thoughts on the whole, you know, hearing all that? Yeah, and really quickly, just to add some context to what you're saying, he's he's 62 years old. So 10 years is when he, the so, year he threw out, you know. Right. Um. So I, I can't say, I, I mean, part of me would say that I was surprised in that, um, a lot of people will make this a family thing. Mm -hmm. But Steve Bashotti, a couple things that I know is that he's an extremely intelligent man. 
um, is extremely good at, at creating a culture and he takes the businesses that he puts his handprints on very seriously. I have a lot of friends that work at Aerotech and um, while I don't ag agree with everything that not agree with, I'm not a big fan of everything that they do. One thing that I think they have right is the culture. Like it's a fun, super competitive, like high, high reward type culture. There's like a lot of good things about it. It's about merit and things like that. It's not about, Hey, you're, you're given this title. No, everyone, everyone's comp is it. Comp plan is open. Everyone knows it. Uh, everyone knows how much each other's making. You compete with one another. Like it's mm -hmm. set up very well. They have like team huddles in the morning and, and stuff like that to, to kind of create that competition and camaraderie. So all that, the, re the reason I say that is because I, I don't know if he ever uh, saw this as a family venture. You know what I mean? I don't know if he ever saw this later on as uh, passing it on to his kids as something that he feels like he needed to do. Because if you look at the company that he built first, people are successful there not based on what college they go to, on who their dad is, but it's about how they perform. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think he believes a lot in merit. Right? Uh, the, the other thing that um, I think is a good thing about this is because I think as Ravens fans, you should be happy to hear that he's not passing it down because statistically speaking, second, second generation companies over half of them fail. In fact, I would say over 60% of them fail. Um, and then third generations, it's like 90%. Oh, so wow. yeah, when, when you're, gr when you grow up with a silver spoon in your mouth, right. And you're handed something, even if you think you've had to work for it in very rare cases, the work that you've done pales in comparison to those that have come before you. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's a good thing uh, that for Ravens, as far as continuing what we have, continuing, uh, you know, us as Ravens fans, even when Bashadi is is gone as the owner, we're going to still be fans of the Ravens. Oh, yeah. So I course. think that that we should be happy. And Glenn, you know, what? I'm also going to I'm going to throw out a name here hmm. to be on the lookout for. Uh, I just did. I was doing some research here. Kevin Plank's net worth is hmm. two billion dollars. Okay. Now that means that he could leverage if his net worth is $2 billion, he could easily leverage uh, the, the resources he has at his hands mm -hmm. uh, to get $5 billion. I have no doubt about that if he wanted to do it, or he could come, come in with a group and be the majority owner within the group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that that would be an interesting play. And I think it could be exciting for Ravens fans. He's a local guy, obviously nothing, you know, I have to worry about, them going to Indianapolis. You don't have to worry about anything of that nature. Um, they would stay here in Baltimore. Of course, if you guys don't know, Kevin Plank is the founder of Under Armour. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Went those to the are University of Maryland built yeah, a right. massive right. sports facility at Maryland. Right. He's, um, I mean, yeah. the, the global headquarters for Under Armour is right there at Den Harbor. It looks beautiful. Um, yeah. they've built a lot of great fields around the city. I mean, I think it would be the encapsulation of an incredible local successful businessman to do something like that. So I'm just yeah. saying that's a name for me that came to name. my mind immediately. Yeah, that's a good name. That Cause that's the worry. Like right now, my neighbors across the street house is up for sale. And so there's excitement and there's fear, you know, there's excitement in that, Hey, maybe there'll be a nice family that has some kids that could play with my son, could play with my brother's kids. Um, you know, so there's excitement, but there's also the fear. Like what if, you know, we get some 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 raging partiers who like to have all night, uh, you know, loud parties and keep me up at night. Like there's always the worry. So the worry, of course, if Steve uh, ultimately does decide to sell in the next 10 or 15 years, if it goes to, say, the highest bidder, you know, we could end up with one of these owners that we see around the league that just don't feel a competitive team. They are constantly turning over their front office and coaching staff, which you know, Steve Bashotti said it himself, consistency is how you build culture. You know, you can't you can't build a culture when you're constantly changing out uh, the parts. Um, so th that's the concern is that you end up with an owner who's either not as committed to winning or just doesn't know how to build a winning culture uh, inside the NFL, because I think it is a unique, a unique thing. And, and, and I think the Ravens have something special with the yeah. with the guys they have, you know, with Ozzy and Eric and, and, and Coach Harbaugh. So, you know, that that's the concern is because I feel like we're very lucky to have an owner like Steve Bishotti, who's so committed to the team, so committed to winning and understands that this isn't necessarily this isn't a money making scheme. This is a 
this is something he does uh, for fun and 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 wants to be competitive at, and he's a very competitive guy in general. And so that's the worry. Will we get an owner who's willing to invest the money that he will, will make back into the team, into the product on the field like Bashadi does? He's constantly improving the facilities. He's constantly improving the stadium. Um, or do they get a guy who's just looking at this as a way to make more money uh, and he doesn't necessarily concern himself – with the on the field results because he knows that with the TV contracts and the and just how the NFL is it's you don't really lose money in the NFL very often Jimbo yeah and Bashadi's definitely been committed while you don't lose money in the NFL of his partners uh within Aerotech I know that <laughs> this is gonna sound funny to say he's I, I'm pretty sure he's the he's done the worst Mm. In, in in comparison to them and and continue with the business endeavor and the growth of the business not that Bishotti's done bad he obviously does you know he's a, I think he's worth uh almost 6 little, billion yeah he's worth a little under 6 billion and a lot of that of course is wrapped up in the value of the ravens yeah right um with with all that being said what I, the reason I'm saying that is because of his commitment to the team to do it right, to invest in the team, to invest in the facilities, just like you were mentioning, we want to make sure that our next owner does that. Uh, but, but the question I'll, I'll give back to you, Glenn, and I'll give my answer after you give, when do you, I mean, if he's taught, he's got a plan, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. to me, I don't think it's going to be 10 years. Mm. What do you, what do you think? What's your, what's your, what's your ballpark? What's your uh, gut tell you? When do you think something like this will happen? Well, he put a number on it. So until I hear anything different, I'm going to say 10 years. I'm going to say 72 years old, like he mentioned. I know that there's going to be some disappointed Orioles fans because there was a lot of Orioles fans hoping Vashadi might make a run at buying the O's and and kind of giving that same level of, of a winning commitment uh, to the Orioles that he's been given to the Ravens. Uh, but I, that doesn't sound like that's the case if, you're, if your plan is to sell um, anytime soon. I would say in the next 10 years, because he said it himself, he wants to be able to enjoy um, the, you know, the spending of his money and not just see it, be, you know, or not just have it spent after he passes. So I think that he wants to make sure he's still young enough physically and mentally to, to see where that money goes and to, of course, he has a big yacht. He likes to spend a lot of time on his boat. Um, and he said he plays golf four days a week, um, which is got to be pretty nice. Uh, I would certainly love to do that as well. But um, I, I think he wants to enjoy his retired life um, as, mu as much as you can. And you can't do that when you're, you know, 85, 90 years old and your body's starting to, you know, give out. So I think he's in relatively good shape. So I, I think within the next 10 years, I'm hoping it's on the back end of that 10 and not the front end because it's going to be a sad day when Bashadi sells the team. Even if, let me, I know you're going to give your answer on the 10 years, but do you think, Bashadi it cares about the team, about the city enough to not simply sell it to the highest bidder, but highest to make bidder. sure that the owner has some love and some respect for what this team is. And, and, and like you said, like, isn't planning on moving the Ravens or anything crazy? Cause yeah. we've seen it here in Baltimore before. Do you think he would make sure that he does his homework on the owner? A hundred percent. And, and this is the beauty. This is there's a ton of value to having Steve Bashadi as an owner. But for those of you that don't know what Aerotech does, they're basically the gold standard in a lot of ways for uh, recruit their recruiting firm. So they're, the way that they make money is they find the best resources for companies that can't find those resources on their own. Human resources, right? Like mm. engineers, uh, so, you know, uh, CEOs. Network. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably not CEOs, but, no. job, you know, accountants, you know, you know, whatever. Um, any type of position. The reason I'm, I'm saying that is because you get very good at understanding people, hiring the right people. It is no mistake that, in my opinion, Bashadi has the best staff from top to bottom in the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not by mistake because he knows how to hire people. It's literally what made him a billionaire. So with all that being said, trust me, I believe in Steve Bashadi to do a few things, build a culture, invest in the team and know how to hire the right people. So certainly he's going to do the right thing. I have very little concern about uh, who the teams, who the team will go to. I feel very good about Bashadi's uh, want, desire, and ability 
to properly assess and 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 decide on the right person. Now, I got some bad news for you, Glenn. I think 67 is the cap. Why 67? Well, because 67 is the age culturally here in the States mm -hmm. that people retire, right? That's retirement age right now. Mm -hmm. And I know he's not a normal person in that, like, he doesn't live by the life of others, right? Like, he doesn't. But I think that if he wants to do what he wants to do, the more as every year, he, I think he'll take more consider more seriously if he's really committed to that goal, the the want to make sure he's physically able to. And every year he waits, every year he runs the risk of not being able to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So if he wants to do all those things, then I think it 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 makes sense for him to to do it earlier rather than later. Mm -hmm. Um. So Scares I think it's you know what I mean. I think well, I've known you for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think none of us are the biggest fans of change. Just remember that change is the only consistent thing in life. It's the only thing we have is a constant. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would have faith and confidence in the fact that Bashadi is going to do the right thing. Wherever this team goes, they're going to do the right thing. And also that we're selling for way more than the Broncos. Just yeah, I mean, I, I got to think that five is probably a good mark where where, where you can start that's, that's the conversation. The, yeah, the conversation starts at five. Yeah, and then it goes up from there, um, depending on how many bidders he can get involved. But in now, this. Glenn, the, the other thing, too, to consider is that there are other owners that spend more money than Bashadi. While Bashadi spends, mm -hmm. there are other owners that spend more, right? So it could be something... Not, I'm not knocking him for being cheap, right? But I, because he's not. But who knows? It could be a positive thing, right? Like it could take the team even further than we are now. That's always a possibility as well. It could be. That's the optimistic way of looking at it. Of course, I tend to look at things as, um, and it's not a good quality, but I tend to look at things in a pessimistic way. I prepare for the worst. Um, sure. And so, you know, the fear is that we end up with, you know, an owner who, who, you know, similar to the one that a lot of people criticize in John Angelos. And, 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 you know, while I see, you know, the baby birds are playing like they're playing awesome. And, and you can certainly see the rebuild and the, the fruits of, of those losing seasons are starting to kind of finally make its way to Baltimore. But that, that's the worry, you know, you don't want to end up with an owner like, uh, you know, like the Bengals have where they're still struggling to get a, uh, an indoor practice facility still to this day. I saw that they're still there. I was just reading there's um, they're, they're trying to get that big bubble thing that you can get put up. Um, but it's just ridiculous. Like, or Daniel Snyder, who right now is, is dodging subpoenas left and right. Uh, well, you got to believe that Bashadi will not that trust me. He can see right through it. Yeah. I, I hope you're right. And I think, and I think I tend to agree with you. I don't think he would just sell to just the highest bidder. Um, but you know, that is the concern is if, if they can, you know, once they get in, then it's their show. And, you know, then we're just kind of forced to be fans because that's our hometown team. And I would hate to be a f right now. I'm proud of that Ravens team. Like I'm proud to be a fan of that organization and the guys who, you know, lead that organization. Uh, I don't think every fan base can say they're proud of their team and the ownership and the leadership. You know? Right. hundred percent. While you're a fan of the team, right. You, you it's. I mean, that's why I, I, I got into the Orioles eight years ago and then I fell out of, I, f I fell out with it because the Angels are frustrating. Yeah. You know, so yeah. But all that being said, have confidence, have hope. We, we got this. Steve bashadi has got this, but it did catch me off guard because yeah, I just right. wasn't thinking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't and, think that uh, question would come up. Yeah. And I didn't, I think I thought I would think in my head that he would dodge it if it did. Yeah, but the fact that he's got stuff. a well thought out plan, Glenn, also means that these things are much further. This train is further down the track than we anticipated. You know, I'm not saying yeah. next year. I'm not. He's saying still having fun, that. though. He's still absolutely. Having fun. But I think 67 is mo is a is a is a good target. I, I would be surprised if he goes further than that. I don't think he goes into the 70s as the owner of the Baltimore Ravens. Man, okay, so you could be right. Yeah. But let's know what you guys think. Were you yeah. surprised to hear uh, Marlon ask the question, and more importantly for Steve to not. Not really avoid it, like Jimmy said. He he answered it very yeah. honestly. Um, and, and what was your initial reaction? Were you uh, does this a worrisome thing, or were you like Jimmy and in, in, in believing that hey, change is inevitable, and let's hope for the best, and and think that you know have trust in in Steve Bashotti of of naming or selling his team to not just any owner with a deep pocket, but a guy uh, I think that would would continue what he's built here in Baltimore along with Art Modell. 
Um, let us know what you think in, in the comments below, and we'll talk soon. See you. See you.